everybody! I'm Sue Allen Clayton. Welcome to my channel where we'll be learning the tarot deck one card at a time. In today's video we'll be talking about the final four cards in each suit in the tarot deck, which are the court cards, the pages, knights, queens, and kings. For a look at the other parts of the deck, I've linked to two videos, Meet the Major Arcana and Meet the Aces through Tens. I will be using the Radiant Rider Waite Smith tarot deck, so let's get started. Like with traditional playing cards, tarot cards have four suits. These are the wands, swords, cups, and pentacles, which means coins. I have a whole video on what the suits mean, so please check it out in the video Meet the Suits, which is linked below. However, I'm going to give you a very brief description now because it will help you understand the difference between the cards in each suit. Unlike playing cards where you don't really pay much attention to the suit's meaning, the suits in the tarot deck play a critical role. Each suit is also connected to an element. I'm going to talk briefly about each element because they describe the different people in the court cards. Wands is connected to the element of fire. These represent people who are feisty, confident, enthusiastic, adventurous, extroverted, passionate, flashy, and high energy. I'm going through these quickly, so please pause if you want to spend more time looking at the images. These people make good athletes and salespeople. Swords is connected to the element of air. Swords is all about communicating and expressing ourselves. This includes our thoughts about ourselves, as well as our thoughts about the world around us. This encompasses intelligence, knowledge, truth, mental clarity, and our sense of right and wrong. These people make good lawyers and writers. Cups are connected to the element of water. This card is all about emotions. Cups people are gentle, loving, sensitive, nurturing, and feel things deeply. These people make good healers and social workers. Pentacles are connected to the element of earth. It's all about things in the material world, such as our bodies, homes, nature, or how we earn our living. These people are very stable. They work hard and they enjoy traditions. We'll go over each member of the royal court individually, but I wanted to make a few comments first. First of all, don't pay attention to ages or genders. The queen is depicted as female and the king as male. Look at the energy of the card. You could be doing a reading for a very extroverted female who has a masculine, in-charge, king-like energy, or an adventurous, elderly female who embodies the energy of a knight. Second, don't pay attention to the ages. Generally, a page is considered to be a child, a knight in his late teens, early 20s, and the king and queen are older. However, we all have different facets of our personality. You could be doing a reading for someone who's 80 who is acting very immature despite their age, or you could be reading for a teenager who is wise beyond their years. Finally, court cards can represent people in your life or facets of your personality. To figure this out, it's really important to pay attention to the question you're trying to answer and the surrounding cards. For instance, if you ask, why don't my mother and I get along? and you pull the Queen of Pentacles, that card likely represents your mother. However, if you ask, why am I not getting promoted, and you pull the Queen of Pentacles, unless your mother is your boss, it likely represents an aspect of your personality. One more note, this was part of a video that turned out to be almost an hour long, so I carved it into pieces. If you notice a different hairstyle in the next frame, it's not your imagination. So let's begin with the pages. Pages were young boys whose job was to serve royalty. They were in training to become knights. This stage of their training took about seven years. They did things like running messages, cleaning weapons, and starting to learn about combat. Pages are young, innocent, and inexperienced. They are learning a trade, but they are still kids, so they're still learning to control themselves. In tarot, they represent children or your childlike, innocent, and possibly naive qualities. Note that they are all standing. I'm not sure if they're waiting to be told what to do or they're trying to figure out what to do next. So 
The Page of Wands. Wands are about actions, so I guess he's pondering what his next action will be. For the Page of Swords, swords are about communication, and it looks like he's got a lot going on in his head. For the Page of Cups, cups are about emotions and relationships, and he looks like he's taking a break from the seriousness of his job and having a bit of fun. And the Page of Pentacles. Pentacles are all about work, and it sure looks like he is focused on his work. So we've reached the knights. In medieval times, knights were considered to be the elite soldiers. When they weren't conquering other kingdoms, they basically served as law enforcement. They are one step from pages and basically the teenager, 20-year-olds of the deck. Think about how teen boys act. Generally, lots of energy, ready for adventure, but maybe not completely thinking through their actions. They can be super energetic, but also a bit immature or unbalanced. But they are learning to be responsible and mature. Note that they are all mounted on horses, which demonstrates travel, either literally going places or figuratively trying to decide where they want to go in life. The suit indicates how swiftly they are moving. The Knight of Wands horse has two feet in the air. Wands relate to the element of fire. It looks like he's moving quickly and enthusiastically. The Knight of Swords is in a full gallop. Swords are the sign of intellect. He's likely figured out where he's going and he's trying to get there as swiftly as possible. The Knight of Cups is all about emotion. His horse has one leg raised, so he might be moving slowly. Maybe the Knight of Cups is thinking about his feelings about the journey or the feelings of the people he's about to meet or he's left behind. The Knight of Pentacles is standing still. Pentacles are all about the earth and the material world. So maybe he's taken a breather to enjoy the view, or he really doesn't like change, so he's content just staying right where he is. Let's talk about the queens. So the queen represents a mature female. Queens were second in charge and there to support the king. I think of the Queen as being like Rosalind Carter, the wife to former U.S. President Jimmy Carter, who just passed away in November 2023. Here's what Jimmy said about her following her death in a statement released by the Carter Center. Quote, Rosalind was my equal partner in everything I ever accomplished. She gave me wise guidance and encouragement when I needed it. As long as Rosalind was in the world, I always knew somebody loved and supported me. My goodness, that makes me want to cry. What a beautiful thing to say, huh? I feel like that's the spirit of a queen. They were mature, they supported the king, but they also got things done in a more subtle, behind-the-scenes way. She is seen as experienced, nurturing, maternal, and more emotional than the king. Regardless, she knows how to get things done. Note that all the queens are sitting on their thrones. The Queen of Wands is full of energy and looking around. She gets things done. I picture her as being busy organizing the royal balls and maybe food drives for the less fortunate. The Queen of Swords is known for her keen mind. I picture her looking over the accounts of the kingdom and coming up with ideas to make things better. She is looking forward at what needs to be done. I can see her starting a series of schools for the underprivileged. The Queen of Cups is emotional and intuitive. I picture her as being like Lady Diana, who used to comfort people in the hospital. And finally, the Queen of Pentacles is interested in the financial and physical realm. She's about protecting the financial resources of the kingdom, as well as taking care of the physical world, including her help. The king represents a powerful, mature male. The king has the overall responsibility for his kingdom. He was responsible for protecting the kingdom from threats, so he oversaw the military and hung out with other diplomats to keep his kingdom safe. He managed the logistics of the kingdom, such as making laws and collecting taxes. He also made sure that laws were followed and that people were well cared for. He had a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. Overall, he is wealthy, highly skilled, and takes the actions required to run his kingdom very seriously. He is very busy, so he gets straight to the point. He also tends to be very logical and make decisions with his head and not his heart. Note that all the kings are sitting on thrones. The King of Wands is gazing into the distance and looks very powerful. 
Wands are about action, and it looks like he's watching out and waiting for something to happen. The King of Swords is related to air. It's about thoughts and communication. He looks like he's deciding what to do next. The King of Cups is the emotions and relationships suit. The chop in the waters makes me think there's a bit of turmoil in the emotion department, but he appears calm. And the King of Pentacles is about the physical realm. He's surrounded by pretty much anything a person could want. Castles, money, a lush garden. He is clearly a very rich ruler. So that's the end of the court cards. People tend to find this the most challenging part of the deck. I hope this video has helped you understand the court cards, and please join me for the next video.